Hi everyone, it's Catherine here and for the next 20 minutes or so I'm going to be talking to you about being kind to yourself, about self-care and the things that we can do to take care of ourselves. Just while I'm waiting for you to uh, um, join in, um, i just tell you about my day. So I've had a really nice day today. I spent this morning organising my clothes and getting all my summer clothes out of my wardrobe because I have sadly come to terms with the fact that um, summer's finished and getting into winter. So I can't have fit all my clothes in my wardrobe, which is just little, not because I have millions of clothes, although my husband would disagree. So I need to switch them over. So I did a bit of a switch. I put some things on eBay. I went to the farmer's market and um, bought my veg for the week. And then I uh, caught up with a friend and we went up to the stables together and um, I had a lovely ride and then came home and spent some time uh, with the kids uh, and we had a lovely family dinner together. Um, we've got the crock pot out again, it's that time of year and my husband made um, a really nice uh, dinner in the crock pot for everybody. So anyway, um, over the next 20 minutes or so, I want to talk about self-care and being kind to ourselves. And I think sometimes as busy mums, this is something that um, we forget about or we somehow see it as optional. Um, and it's not really optional because we need to make sure that we take care of ourselves so that we can keep the show in the road and um, make things work well for our families. Um, and be able to deal with all the challenges that come our way um, all day, every day. Sometimes it seems at home, at work, um, all over the place. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the way we see ourselves. And um, I think this is really interesting because I think that we unwittingly self-sabotage quite a lot um, without realising it by having quite negative thoughts about ourselves um, and this impacts um, all areas of our lives. So um, I wanted to do um, a little experiment and I want you to think of someone you work with, someone you like who you work with and I want you to think of three things about them that are really great. Okay, so um, while you're having a little think, I'll go first. So I am going to think about my work colleague, Anne-Marie. Um, she is such an amazing person. She is beautiful inside and out. And I really, really love working with her. Um, she's really kind, she's really generous, she is so wise and sensible, so if you have to ask her for advice on anything, she'll willingly help you, and she always says really, really sensible things. She's an expert in her field, so if you have any questions about her area of expertise, you know, just ask her and she'll be able to tell you the answer pretty much straight away. And um, she's also really good at people related things at work. So if you have a kind of HR type issue and you're not really sure what to do, um, if you ask Anne-Marie, then she will give you really fantastic advice. And she's so kind and sensible, it's always good advice. So there we go. That's more than three things about Anne-Marie that are really, really fantastic. And I was able to reel them off so easily and I could, to be honest, keep going for ages because she is incredible. So I'm sure that you can think of someone who you work with and you like and you can do the same exercise. So you can think of three things that are really great about this person 
and reel them off like that. Really, really easy. Okay. So now I'd ask you to think of three things about yourself that are really great. And you can write them in the comments. You can keep them to yourself. Okay. So um, I'll go first. Um, actually, I, <laughs> I can't do it because I feel too awkward. And it's not just because I'm talking to you. So even if I was doing this just kind of for my own edification, I find it really difficult to do. So even if I came up with something like, for example, I really like helping people, which I do, then immediately I think of something else like, although I am quite bossy. So I would think, well, I like to help them but maybe I'll boss people about a bit too much and tell them what I would do if I was them and is that helpful? And then I get into this whole kind of dialogue in my head. And so do you do that too? Like do, just notice when you see yourself doing that. And the thing about it is, so if you were brought up like me, your parents would have probably said, you know, it's really rude to boast about your capabilities. And if you're, you know, you shouldn't be big headed, you shouldn't talk about yourself, let other people say what they want about you, like don't blow your own trumpet. And so I totally get that. Um, and that's how I was brought up. And it's kind of normal. And I would kind of, um, you know, tell my children if they say they think they're really amazing, I'd think, oh gosh, I probably need to tone this down a bit. And so you don't want to come across as boastful or too big headed. But the thing about it is, so even if you're not going to tell anybody else, so even if you're just thinking about it yourself, I struggle with articulating strengths and that's not about being boastful because I'm not telling anybody I'm just thinking to myself and so something funny has happened there where it started off you know learning that it wasn't a good way to be and it wasn't a good thing to say these things out loud and then it ends up being something that I think oh I can't really think it and so that's quite strange. So where does that take us? Well, I guess what I'd say is if you pay attention to yourself, if you notice when you're doing it, then you can just catch yourself and say, oh, I'm doing that again. And then if you want to do something different, if you want to change the narrative in your mind, then you might be more able to do that because you're noticing it more. And the thing is, all of us have got something really unique to offer the world and so I'd love it if you could write down three things that you think that you're great at. And when those counter arguments come into mind, like, but, 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 just don't worry about those for now. So take your three great things and think about what you're going to do with those talents and those skills that you have. And then just carry those around with you, maybe for the rest of the evening, maybe all of tomorrow, maybe all of this week. And then just let me know how that feels. So the next thing I'm going to talk about are, um, is the uh, topic of healthy habits. Okay, so I think when you're taking care of yourself, there's something about the internal narrative that plays in your mind. And then healthy habits, just really basically, what are you doing every day to look after yourself? And I've gone through phases in the past that were like quite extreme. So I would um, be really, 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 really healthy, extremely healthy, and then kind of get tired of being really healthy. And then I'd be really, 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 really unhealthy. So I had a tendency to kind of swing between like super, super healthy and then not healthy at all for a while. And then as I got older, I was kind of a bit better at not having these extreme sort of situations. Um, but I still find that there were some things in my life that, you know, weren't that great. Not big, massive things, but things like I probably wasn't drinking enough water. I probably wasn't eating enough uh, healthy food, like fresh vegetables. And I was probably having a glass of wine to relax rather than, you know, just doing something that was a bit more wholesome. And so for years and years, I, I really struggled with this thing where I would decide, right, that's it, I'm not drinking wine anymore, and I would cut wine out. Or I might think, you know, right, that's it, I'm not having any processed food anymore, I'm only going to have whole foods. And so that would last for, you know, well, sometimes, you know, several weeks. 
but it was quite an effort. So it was like the effort of cutting out these aspects of my diet I find quite difficult. Um, and eventually I would sort of crack. I would like run out of um, uh, determination and then I'd kind of lapse back to where I started. So it's kind of like this habit. It was like deprivation and then reward and then deprivation and then reward. And it kept going on like this for ages. So then one day... Um, I just had this revelation and I decided to take a completely different approach. So what I decided to do was add in. So to, to, to try to forget about taking things out, so I would add in. So I made sure that I added in um, drinking loads of water every day. So I would add in two litres of water into my normal routine. And then I would like add in loads of green leafy vegetables. Like add those in, add those in. And then I would add in um, the gift to myself of having 45 minutes to take exercise. So I'd like add that in as a gift. And then I would like add in um, maybe a massage once a week or once every couple of weeks and maybe try to add in a facial. And so I was adding in, adding in, adding in. And then basically what I found was there just wasn't room for the unhealthy stuff anymore. So unwittingly, I'd kind of stopped drinking wine. I don't drink anymore. And I'd added in all of these healthy habits and they suddenly felt sustainable because I didn't feel that I was deprived and then having to reward myself. And it just changed something in my brain. And I can't tell you exactly what it changed, but it definitely, definitely worked. So whenever you're thinking about taking care of yourself, Maybe try it. Maybe try adding healthy things in, adding healthy things in until you find that um, you just don't have any room for the unhealthy habits that um, you've been trying to get rid of. OK, so we've talked about the way we see ourselves and healthy habits. And then um, the third thing that I want to talk about this evening is um, finding your passion um finding something that you really really love and trying to find the time to do that thing so um there's a little story about my experience so when i was a little girl i used to ride ponies and where i grew up in northern ireland lots of kids rode it was a pretty common thing to do and some children had their own ponies and some um you know went to a riding school and rode a different pony each week anyway so I really really wanted my own pony and so I used to always ask my parents can I have a pony they always used to say no and um, this conversation you know went on and on and um, I remember vividly so I would only have been a little girl at the time and I remember my parents saying to me when you grow up and you have your own money you can buy your own pony horse whatever you want and I remember thinking, right, I will, I will. And so then the years passed by and I, and I kept riding. I always rode on and off. And in the back of my mind, I had this thing like someday I'm going to buy a horse. I'm going to buy my own horse. And, um, you know, I, at university, I had lots of interests. I rode a little bit, but not very much. Um, and then, you know, working in the city, um, I rode a little bit, but again, not very much. But I always had this thing in the back of my mind that someday I'm going to make this happen. Anyway, then I was approaching my 40th birthday and I don't know whether it was like some kind of um, midlife crisis or what. But I suddenly thought, you know, if I don't do this, if I don't buy a horse now... This might never happen. I might never do it because I kind of felt that 40 was a threshold year. So I just couldn't reconcile myself to the possibility that I would never buy a horse. Um, at the same time, I was lucky enough to have just been promoted at work. And alongside the promotion, I got a bit of a pay rise. So I was actually in a financial position where I could afford to buy a horse. So I just decided I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go.